Hey guys, okay, we're back now. We just got done loading the STM32 driver so that we can run it in beta flight. And now we're gonna look at another driver version, which is the CP2102. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Now, I don't have a flight controller. I don't believe I have a flight controller on me that's running that right now, but I do have what we call an FTDI adapter. And that is this little piece that is a USB port on one side and it actually can connect to your flight controller to send data back and forth or any other device. This does use that CP2102 chip. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we need to load this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna minimize beta flight again and we're going to be back in our um, our device manager okay and if you don't remember how to get there let me just show you what we did all right so and we will leave our website up for this one uh, let me close this real quickly so to get to your device manager, just right click on your start button left click on run click control panel and then you can click on device manager okay and that's that was from the last video that we did okay so I'm gonna plug this in and show you exactly what happens let me just make sure these wires don't touch all right, so here we go. Watch, watch the device manager again. Let me drag this down just a little bit. And this would be if you have a, a, a flight controller that uses this chipset. So here's what you'd see, okay? Let me plug this in. Okay, so look at the bottom here now, right? Instead of having it say COM port, it's got another USB device. You see this? CP2104 USB to UART bridge. Now yours may say something different, but the main thing is that you want to get the driver to make this work, okay? Assuming this was your flight controller. And for all purposes, we're going to go ahead and assume that. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to our website, and this time we have the CP210X drivers. Click on the arrow there, drop down. Now I've put in the three most common ones that we would use, but you can click right here and I'll show you what happens. It will open the website to where they give you a whole bunch of options to download, okay? And sometimes you may have to download multiple to find the one that works for you. But let me show you what they would so. So if you look here and you click downloads, look at all the way, they have the 1.1, there's six more versions right here. Look, all of these right here. What I've downloaded are the top three, okay? So we're gonna go with these right now and that's what you can get on our website. So let me go back to the website. And what you'll do is you'll go to your software downloads, software links right here. CP2 you want to do, just click the arrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, the first one is going to be the universal Windows driver. So I'm going to click that. And it's going to download that to my uh, downloads folder, just like the STM did in the last video. Okay, so we'll wait here. And now we're going to go ahead and click show in folder. All right. And we're going to right click on it, left click on cut. And we're going to go to double click our drones folder. And we're going to right click and left click on paste. Okay, now here, we will make a new folder and we're going to call this one CP, uh, whoops, hold on, I need this two, sorry, CP210X drivers, okay? And we're going to just drag that and drop it in that folder, double click the folder, right click on the file and left click on extract all, make sure to leave show extracted files, click extract, okay? Now we're going to, these are extracted folders right here. Our extracted files right here and I want to keep the device manager up again so we can watch what happens so we're running a, a, a 64 base system or sorry an X uh, uh, 64 base system right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this one okay and we're gonna click yes and we're gonna watch this install so click next and you'll see as this is transferring we should see our device manager start updating okay Click finish and all of a sudden what should come back is a COM port just like before and look at that you now have the silicone labs driver loaded properly and again if we over to go into beta flight now this isn't a flight controller so I can't connect to it and do it if I click connect here it's not going to do much of anything right it's just going to say it's open because it's not a flight controller but what we can see is that our device manager has the proper driver loaded so you now have both options so if you load your flight controller and all you see is a COM port and not an STM electronics or a silicone labs, then you need to load the proper driver. And you can, you can load both of them. It doesn't matter because at one point or another, you're gonna come across both drivers most likely. So just load both the files and you'll be just fine, okay? So that does it for the second set of drivers that you would need to load. And the next video we're gonna show you is what happens when you try to go to a bootloader mode, basically, where you've locked up your flight controller and you need to flash it again, but it, your computer won't recognize it. I'm gonna show you what happens next. And guys, that should be about it. So just stay tuned and we'll be right back.